okay so let us start uh, today session uh, in the last session okay what is the previous session we have uh, conducted okay uh, we have started with simple air cooling system followed by simple air evaporative cooling system followed by bootstrap air cooling system then bootstrap air evaporative cooling system okay so those four system we have seen okay we have also solved the problem based on those system okay now in this lecture okay we will initially see the reduced ambient air cooling system followed by regenerative air cooling system okay so for these systems we will see the schematic diagram as well as the ts diagram okay so now now let us starts with this uh, first one that is reduced ambient now 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 let us starts with this one right so as you can see the schematic diagram okay so when you see the schematic diagram okay so th this is the ambient air this is the ambient air which is coming okay let us see or let us say at point number 1 so ambient air is coming at point number 1 right so when the ambient air comes okay there is there will be a ramming effect so it gets ram okay so when it gets ram okay it will comes out at point number 2 okay so ram air will comes out at point number 2 okay now what do you understand by by ramming okay let, let us see that initial temperature is t1 okay here temperature is t1 and pressure is p1 okay so when you ram it okay what will happen you this is the initial pressure which is p1 right this is the initial pressure which is p1 you can see the initial pressure is p1 okay so at any point on this line the pressure is constant that is p1 okay so initial pressure on this line is p1 okay similarly at this point we have temperature t1 as you can see so at point number 1 so point number 1 it is lying on this pressure line where pressure is p1 okay and as this is a ts diagram simply when you go on a vertical axis you will get a temperature that is t1 okay you will get a temperature that is t1 okay so so this is the ambient condition ambient condition okay atmospheric condition okay now when you ram it okay so you can see the process 1 2 2 okay so 1 2 2 it's a ramming okay 1 2 2 is a ramming so i'll just write down here process 1 2 2 okay 1 2 2 okay it's a isentropic ramming okay the 1 2 2 it's a isentropic or we used to call that as adiabatic okay isentropic or adiabatic ramming okay isentropic or adiabatic ramming okay so that is nothing but 1 2 2 it's a isentropic or adiabatic ramming okay so see isentropic or adi adiabatic okay so these are nothing but ideal processes okay so if you want okay i will add here one more word okay that is nothing but ideal okay or this is nothing but ideal okay this is nothing but ideal ramming ideal ramming okay this is nothing but ideal ram right so one to two it's isentropic or this is adiabatic or ideal ramming now what happens during one to two as you can see okay so when you move from point number 1 to 2 okay on point number 1 where uh, the pressure was p1 okay so when you ram it what happens the pressure increases to p2 okay because point number 2 is lying on the pressure line where pressure is p2 okay similarly when you go horizontally okay and you you just take the uh, temperature okay it is coming as p2 okay so at point number 2 pressure is p2 okay temperature is t2 okay so what you can observe is pressure p2 is greater than p1 similarly temperature t2 is greater than t1 okay so this is what you can observe uh, from the pressure okay uh, uh, this pressure and temperature okay so pressure got increase as well as temperature got increase okay because air gets ram okay air gets ram but what is about the entropy as you can see okay entropy is constant okay we are, we are on a ts diagram right so entropy is constant so during 1 to 2 it's a vertical line okay on a ts diagram that means entropy is constant right now see now this is all about the ramming process okay so once it is getting rammed okay it is supplied to the main compressor okay 
it is supplied to the main compressor okay so th this is nothing but your compressor okay so 2 is the inlet to the compressor okay and 3 is the exit to the compressor okay 2 is the inlet 3 is the exit but but all of you remember see this 1 to 2 1 to 2 it's a ideal ramming okay while when you talk about 1 to 2 dash okay 1 to 2 dash because you will be starting from point number 1 only okay but if you move moves okay vertical line move along a vertical line okay it is said to be isentropic process or adiabatic process or ideal process okay but when you when you move it in this manner like one to two dash okay it's a actual ramming okay it's a actual ramming okay it's a actual ramming okay so what you observed what difference you will observe between the ideal ramming and the actual ramming is okay in ideal ramming okay the air gets ram to a higher pressure you can see the point number two okay point number two it is at point number two we have pressure p2 okay and at point number two dash we have the pressure p2 dash try to understand at point number two we have the pressure p2 dash okay so when you when you compress it isentropically or adiabatically okay uh, the, the air gets ramped to higher pressure okay that is at point p2 okay but in actual it gets ramped to lower pressure that is p2 dash okay so here you can observe that also p2 is greater than p p2 dash okay i i i'll just also write down this p2 is also greater than p2 dash okay p2 is also greater than p2 dash right p2 is also greater than p2 dash right so this is all what, what okay this is all about the actual ramming process okay so i ideally you need to uh, the ideally you are expecting the air to ramp at a pressure p2 okay but actually it gets ramp to pressure p2 dash okay and this p2 dash pressure it is less as compared to the ideal pressure okay actual pressure is less as compared to the ideal pressure okay so this is all about the process 1 2 2 that is ramming okay now let us go to the next okay that is 2 2 3 okay it's a compressor okay the process 2 to 3 it occurs in a compressor okay so obviously in compressor what happens okay there will be isentropic or adiabatic or ideal compression so i'll just mention here okay 2 to 3 okay it is same isentropic or adiabatic or ideal okay compression or ideal compression okay so this is what happens during 2 to 3 sorry 2 dash to 3 you can see that 2 dash to 3 okay so when you talk about 2 dash to 3 2 dash to 3 it's a isentropic or adiabatic or ideal compression okay so when you when you see the pressure at point number 2 it is p2 dash p2 dash is a pressure at point number 2 dash okay so when you com when you compress it ideally what happens you will get a point number 3 okay so at point number 3 Okay, what pressure we have at point number three? We have pressure equal to P3. Okay, so when you compress it isentropically from point number two dash, you will be able to get it till point number three. Okay, so that means what? Pressure which was P2 dash, it got increased to P3. Pressure got increased from, from P2 dash to P3. That means P3 is greater than P2 dash, right? P3 is greater than P2 dash. As you can see, Okay, this pressure line, okay, on this pressure line, obviously you have higher pressure as compared to the below pressure line, right? So we will have the value of P3 greater than P3 dash. So pressure got increase, okay, from 2 dash to 3 at the same time, when you talk about the temperature, okay, obviously it's a compression. So during compression also, temperature will be, it will be increased, okay? So temperature at point number 2 dash is T2 dash. And temperature at point number three is T3, and you will observe that T3 is greater than T2 dash. Okay, this is because this is the compression, right? Right. This is about compression. Okay, but see, this is this two dash to three. It's the ideal, ideal compression. Okay, that ideal nothing. Ideal means what? Isentropic or adiabatic. Okay, but this compression can also be actual. Okay, that is two dash to three dash. That's two dash to three dash. It's an actual compression. It's an actual compression. 
see what, what do you mean by isentropic or adiabatic okay see this isentropic this indicates that you will have 100% efficiency okay you will have efficiency is equal to 100% because ideally you will have efficiency 100% okay see what the, what this line 2 dash to 3 indicates line 2 dash to 3 indicates that this compressor see this 2 dash to 3 occurs in a compressor okay so this 2 dash to 3 line indicates that the compressor is 100% efficient okay the the line 2 dash to 3 indicates that compressor is 100% efficient okay but when you talk about the line 2 dash to 3 dash okay it indicates that compressor is less than 100% efficient okay it is not 100% efficient obviously it will be having some less value as compared to the okay 100% efficiency okay so 2 dash to 3 is a 100% efficiency and 2 dash to 3 dash is less than 100% efficiency because it's an actual compression okay now see now now see all of you okay when you when you just come from 3 okay when you when you move from 3 okay you will observe okay once the air gets <clears throat> when when the air is available at the exit of the compressor okay small portion of the air is supplied to the combustion chamber okay where the heat is added okay and uh, then it, it is further supplied to the gas turbine okay so once it is supplied to the gas turbine what happens that air will drive the turbine okay because this air will, will, will be flow on the blades of the turbine okay and what happens the blades of the turbine will starts rotating okay and when this blade starts rotating obviously the shaft on which they are mounted uh, they will start ro rotating and this shaft it is further uh, coupled to the compressor okay and then compressor will uh, start operating there right then th th this is what the cycle is okay so some portion will be supply some portion of the compressed air is supplied to the combustion chamber where heat is added okay then it is further supplied to the gas turbine where that air gets expanded okay and when the air expands obviously what happens the power gets produced and whatever the power produced it is utilized so as to run a compressor okay and then compressor start operating now what happens the maximum portion it is supplied to where it is supplied okay to the heat exchanger you can see so point number three is the inlet to the heat exchanger okay now see when you see this this line with the fluid which is coming okay it is crossing okay that means what see there is there is no any connection between uh, the air which is coming out of the compressor and the above air okay so if you want okay i'll, I'll just show it here with the color okay so uh, let us see now okay see this is the compressed air okay which is coming out of the compressor this is the compressed air which is coming out of the compressor i will just indicate it by I will just indicate it by red color. Okay, so this is the air which is coming out of the compressor. Okay, and you see this air will be at a higher pressure and at a higher temperature. Okay, so when the air okay is flowing through the heat exchanger, okay, so purpose of the heat exchanger is to exchange the heat. Okay, that means the hot air which is available at the inlet of the heat exchanger, we need to convert that into cold air. Okay, we need to convert that into cold air. And how we are doing that? So as you can see, uh, the rammed air, okay, the rammed air, it is supplied, okay, you can see this is a rammed air. I'll, I'll just show it, it with green color, okay. So this is a rammed air, which is, okay, available. It is supplied, you can see the rammed air, it is supplied, okay, in the first cooling turbine. This is a turbine, okay. So rammed air is supplied, in the cooling turbine so what happens that the, the the temperature of the rammed air get decrease you can see when you supply it on a turbine what happens the turbine will expand right and when the turbine will expand what happens is its temperature gets decrease okay when when the turbine expands what happens the temperature of the air gets decrease okay so so this rammed air okay it becomes further cooled okay it becomes further cooled so what happens so see, when you talk about the temperature at T2, okay, and the temperature available at the exit of the turbine, okay, so obviously at this point, you will get the temperature less as compared to the T2, 
okay because this is nothing but a t2 right this this is a t2 right so this is a t2 okay so here from where the air is coming right so this air okay ram air okay it is expanded in a turbine as a result its temperature further decreases and then that air is supplied to the heat exchanger okay you can see this now now that air is supplied to where it is supplied to the heat exchanger now what happens when the air is supplied to this heat exchanger obviously the the hot air is flowing inside the tubes of the heat exchanger okay the hot air is fluid flowing inside the tubes of the heat exchanger okay now now this is a cold air which is coming and this cold air is flowing on those tubes okay so when the cold air flows okay flow on this tube as a result what happens when the cold air flow on this tube okay what happens is okay this this hot air get turns into cold air okay so this hot air gets turn into the cold air okay so this hot air turn out to be cold air okay i'll just show show, show it with you okay i'll just show that okay so this will comes out to be a cold air so 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 see all of you now the cold air is coming out okay so this cold air is coming out okay so this cold air is coming out right so this cold air is coming out of the heat exchanger because because see the cold air which is coming from the turbine it is cooling the hot air which is coming from the compressor okay and where this heat exchange occurs it occurs in a heat exchanger okay so what happens this hot air becomes cold okay and this cold air becomes hot okay this cold air becomes hot so if if you are get, getting I'll, i'll just show it with some okay different color so you will be able to understand that okay okay so here i'll show it by green color okay so that you can understand that okay and here it will comes out as a hot air okay now this 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 will comes out as a hot air so now this will go out okay because it was cooled it was a cold air okay it exchanges the heat with hot air so it becomes hot okay so this hot air okay will comes out of the heat exchanger okay the hot air is comes out will comes out of the heat exchanger and where it is where it is supplied now okay it will be exhausted okay by using a cooling fan so it will be exhausted by using a cooling fan right it will be exhausted by using a cooling fan now now let us understand the process three is the inlet to the heat exchanger okay and four is the exit to the heat exchanger i will i will mark this point here this is point number 4 okay this is point number 4 so three is the inlet to the heat exchanger four is the exit to the heat exchanger okay so let us see the process okay so see three three is the ideal point three dash is the actual point so we may start from three to four or we may start from 3 dash to 4 it will depends upon okay what is given in the problem right now now let us start okay so what happens during 3 to 4 or 3 dash to 4 okay the the hot air gets cooled okay so whenever any fluid gets cooled okay obviously it is rejecting the heat okay so when whenever any object rejects the heat it gets cooled and when it rejects the heat what happens its temperature as well as entropy decreases so as you can see from point number 3 dash to 3 3 dash 3 or till 4 what happens temperature decreases from 3 to 4 or 3 dash to 4 so temperature also decreases entropy also decreases the reason for this is okay uh, in heat exchanger the fluid gets air gets cooled right in heat exchanger air gets cooled okay because it loses the heat and when it loses the heat obviously it, its temperature will decrease as well as entropy will decrease from 3 to 4 okay so but see all of you the process of heat exchange it occurs at a constant pressure okay so whether you take the pressure at point number 3 or whether you take the pressure at point number 4 okay it is same pressure at point number 3 or pressure at point number 4 is same right so because pressure whatever the pressure that is available at the exit of the heat exchanger it is same as that of pressure which is available at the inlet of the heat exchanger okay see purpose of the heat exchanger is is just to exchange the heat okay and process of exchanging the heat it occurs at a constant pressure okay process of exchanging the heat 
it occurs at what it occurs at a constant pressure okay so pressure at the exit of the heat exchanger it is same as that of in uh, at the inlet of the heat exchanger okay so that is what you can understand from process 3 to 4 right now see whatever the air that is available now this is a cold air cold air okay i, I will also mention this point about point number 4 okay so value of t4 okay it will come less than t3 or t3 dash okay t3 or t3 dash similarly value of pressure p4 okay it is same as p3 or it is equal to p3 dash okay it is also mentioned okay it is also mentioned is equal to p3 dash right it is equal to p3 dash right now see all of you when you talk about point number four, okay, so once the, the, once the cold air comes out of the heat exchanger, we are supplying it to the secondary turbine, okay, secondary turbine, okay, so the secondary turbine, cooling turbine, it's very important because from where the heat is supplied to the cabin or air is supplied to the cabin, rather, from here, the air is supplied to the cabin. So see, four is the inlet to the heat exchanger, no, sorry, four is the inlet to the turbine, Okay, and let's say that phi is the exit to the turbine. Phi, this is, let us plot this point. Phi, okay, this is the exit to the turbine. Okay, four that is the outlet of the heat exchanger. It is same as inlet to the turbine. Okay, and phi is the exit to the turbine. Now all of you know that what happens. Okay, uh, during uh, during this uh, expansion, what ha what happens in a turbine? In turbine expansion occurs. Okay, as a result, what happens during 4 to 5 is during 4 to 5, okay, the air gets expanded, okay, and whenever air gets expanded, okay, obviously what happens, its temperature decreases, okay, and this expansion again from 4, see, from point number 4, we will expand, okay, so what is the meaning of ex expansion, okay, during expansion, what happens, temperature decreases, okay, again, that expansion can be either ideal or it can be actual. Okay. So ideally it will expand from four to five, but in actually it will expand from four to five dash. Okay. I will also mention this process. Uh, that is a three to three to four, three to four. Okay. Three to four. Or uh, I will also mention here. Okay. Let me write down this one three or, or three dash to four. Okay. It is nothing but cooling in heat exchanger, cooling in heat exchanger, heat exchanger, right? Now what I said, what is about four, four to five, four to five, it is nothing but what isentropic, four to five, it is nothing but isentropic, or this is also known as adiabatic, or this is known as ideal expansion or this is nothing but an ideal expansion okay now what is about four to five dash okay it's the actual expansion four to five dash it's the actual expansion four to five dash it's the actual expansion yeah is it okay yes now see once it is getting so see four to five it's the ideal and four to five dash is the actual see ideally we may we may we may say that Turbine is producing a power from T4 to T5, but in actually it is only producing, okay, from T4 to T5 dash. You can see when you, when you see the length of the line 4 to 5 dash, it is less as compared to 4 to 5. Okay. That means turbine in ideal condition, it produces more power than in actual. Okay. Ideal is 4 to 5. Act Okay. Yes. Am I audible? All of you? Am I audible? Yes. Yes. Am I audible? Yes, sir. 
okay now see once it is getting out of the turbine as you can see where it is supplied where it is supplied to the cabin okay where the air goes air goes to the cabin okay air to the cabin okay once it is coming out of the turbine it is supplied to the cabin and after okay after from the cabin it will comes out at point number 6 okay it will comes out at point number 6 okay so 5 is the inlet to the cabin and 6 is the exit to the cabin okay now what happens when you supply this cold air into the cabin see this is a cold air okay at point number 5 you can see we have lowest temperature in the cycle see point number 5 or 5 dash we have lowest temperature in the cycle lowest temperature you can see we have a lowest temperature in the cycle see everything we are doing here is just to lower the temperature you can see we have started with temperature we have started with the temperature t1 and we are able to bring it up to t5 or t5 dash so so we got cooled air here you can see t5 or t5 dash okay we are able to get a cold cold what you can say Uh, cool air okay so see whatever the air that is coming out at point number 5 it is supplied to the cabin it is a cool air so this cool air is going to abstract the heat from the cabin okay what this cool air will do it will abstract the heat from the cabin as a result what happens the temperature of the air gets increase you can see so what happens the temperature of the air that is t6 see initial temperature was t5 dash or t5 initial temperature was t5 or t5 dash it will increase to t6 you can see so when you when you see the value of t6 it is greater as compared to t5 or t5 dash okay it is greater as compared to t5 or t5 dash see here i i, I will also I'll also mention here we'll get the value of p5 which is less than p4 we will also get the value of t5 that is or t5 dash less than t4 okay now what will happen okay when the air it is supplied to the cabin air will abstract the heat from the cabin okay so air will abstract the heat from the cabin as a result the temperature of the cabin gets decreased okay temperature of the cabin get decreased but temperature of the air gets increased okay so what happens the temperature of the air get increased here okay so temperature of the air gets increased okay so see when when the temperature of the air increases from t5 to t6 what happen with the temperature of the cabin it decreases because this air will abstract the heat from the cabin as a result we are getting a refrigerating effect in the cabin okay what we will get we will get a refrigerating effect in the cabin so here only we will get a refrigerating effect so in in the cabin only we are able to get a refrigerating effect if you want i'll just also mention here okay where we are getting a refrigerating effect we are getting a refrigerating effect here okay so here we will get a refrigerating effect okay here 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 we are, here we are getting a cooling effect right yeah is that okay all of you yeah is it okay with this diagram is there any doubt you are facing yeah yeah so i'll just mention here 4 to 5 then 5 or 5 dash to 6 okay it's the cooling in the cabin okay cooling okay cooling occurs in a cabin okay cooling cooling of a cabin you can call this is a cooling of a cabin or you can you can say heating of the air okay or heating of the air okay it's a cooling of the cabin or heating of the air okay or here you can call this as a refrigerating effect this is also known as a refrigerating effect refrigerating effect yeah is it okay all of you yeah is that okay with this one yes is it okay yeah let me know is that okay yes sir yes sir yes so so this is all about the the reduced okay ambient air cooling system okay we have seen the pv diagram uh, sorry schematic diagram and the ts diagram okay now now let us see one more uh, uh, system okay what is called as regenerative air cooling system okay so as you can see now okay this is regenerative air cooling system okay so same we have you can see okay this is a ramped air 
which will come out at point number one. Okay, so that ramp, sorry, this, this is the ambient air which will come out at point number one. It will be get ramp, so it will comes out at point number two. Okay, see the ambient air will come at point number one. Okay, it gets rammed. Okay, so it will comes out at point number two. Okay, so see one two two, it's a ramming. You can see one two two, it's a ramming. Okay, it's the ideal ramming. Okay. One two two, it's the ideal ramming. You can see one two two. Okay, it's a, a adiabatic. One two two, it's a adiabatic, or you can call this also as isentropic. Okay, or this is also known as ideal, or this is also known as ideal ramming. Okay, one two two. Okay, it is about that. Okay, now what is about one two two dash? It's a axial. It's a axial ramming. One two two dash. It's the actual ramming, right? It's the actual ram. Yeah. Okay. So this is all about one two two dash. See ramming in ramming. As I told you, same. Okay. What happens during one two two? Pressure also increases. Temperature also increases. Okay. That is during one two two or one two two dash. Okay. Now once it is getting ram, we will supply it to the compressor. So at compressor, it will comes out at point number three. Okay. So from compressor, it will comes out at point number. Three. Now, what happens during compression? As you can see, that compression can be either ideal or it can be again actual. Okay. So when you talk about this point, that is two dash to three. Okay. Two dash to three is adiabatic or isentropic or ideal compression or ideal compression. Okay. But when you talk about two dash to three dash, okay, it is the actual compression. It's the actual Compression. It's an actual compression, right? It's an actual compression. Okay, same, same. We have it. Okay, pressure will be increased during compression as well as temperature can be increased during compression, right? Now see all of you. Now what happens? A small portion of the heat, it is a small portion of the air, it is supplied to the combustion chamber where heat is added. Okay, and that air is air will flow on the blades of the turbine. So turbine will start producing a power which is supplied to the compressor so as to drive the system. Okay, maximum portion, maximum portion of the compressed air it is supplied to what? It is supplied to the heat exchanger. Okay, so this is the compressed air. Okay, which is coming. This is the compressed air which is coming inside a heat exchanger. Okay, now this compressed air which is coming inside a heat exchanger it is cooled. Okay, by using a rammed air. Okay, so rammed air, I will just show it here. Okay, so rammed air will, will come here. Okay, so this is a rammed air which will come. Okay, so this rammed air will cool the compressed air. Okay, this is a compressed air. So this rammed air will flow on, okay, in, on the tube, okay, inside which the compressed air is flowing. Okay, see this, you can see this compressed air. Okay, and this is a rammed air. So rammed air will flow. Okay, on the tubes through which the compressed air is flowing. Okay, so as a result, what happens? The, the, this uh, this compressed air okay gets cooled. Okay, so it gets cooled. So at exit, what we are getting? It's a okay colder air we are getting, right? We are getting a colder air. So here we will get a cold air. Okay, you can see this cold air we are getting, right? We are getting cold air, right? So let us let us plot this point as four. Okay, so let us plot this point as four. Okay, so this hot air becomes cold. Okay, and what happens with this cold air? Okay, which is coming, it becomes hot. Okay, it becomes hot, right? So I'll, I'll show you that. Okay, it becomes hot. So this hot now it will comes out. Right? As you can see, okay, so this hot will come. Hot air will come. Here, okay, so this heat exchange occurs in indirect manner. It occurs in an indirect manner. Both the fluids are not in direct contact with each other. They are not in direct contact. Okay, so the this heat heat exchange occurs across the tubes. Okay, so what this cold air okay will flow on these tubes. Okay, through which the compressed air is flowing. Okay, so they will exchange the heat. Now this the, the, the hot air which is coming out of the heat exchanger. Okay, it is uh, supplied or it is drawn by the cooling air fan and it is exhausted. Okay, so I'll just mention here now. Okay, that process three to four, three to four, that is a cooling, cooling of air, cooling of air in heat exchanger, cooling of air in 
heat exchanger okay that is a cooling of air in heat exchanger so this point can be 3 okay or this also can be 3 dash right this can be 3 or 3 dash 3 or 3 dash to 4 okay 3 or 3 dash to 4 okay 3 or 3 dash to 4 that is a cooling of the air in heat exchanger okay now see whatever the air that is coming at point number 4 as you can see it is it is supplied to regenerative heat exchanger you can see why it is called as regenerative air cooling system because here what we have done okay the the regenerative heat exchanger is added okay now see this regenerative uh, heat exchanger see all of you you can see this regenerative heat exchanger okay what it is doing it is it is further cooling this air which is coming out of the first heat exchanger okay so you can see here that air now i will supply here okay so I, this this air will flow okay through the tubes of the regenerative heat exchanger okay so when that air will flow okay so what will happen okay again it gets further cooled okay that air will gets further cooled okay so let me plot this point number 5 somewhere here let us see this point number 5 okay i'll just show that by different color okay uh, let us see okay so see this, this is the air okay so here i i'll just show that okay so it will comes out at point number 5 it gets further cooled right it gets further cooled as you can see okay this is point number 5 right this is point number 5 right this, this is a point number 5 i'm drawing right so it gets further cooled so you can see we can move from 3 to 4 or 3 dash to 4 okay in heat exchanger okay and what is about this 4 to 5 4 to 5 it's a regenerative heat exchanger now why it is called as regenerative heat exchanger the reason is that okay try to understand this one so 4 to 5 it's a regenerative heat exchanger where temperature is further decreased you can see so temperature it is further decreased from t4 to t5 temperature is further decreased from t4 to t5 because at the exit of the first heat exchanger the temperature was t4 we have lowered it somewhat okay till t5 okay but when you see uh, the pressure okay at the inlet and exit of any heat exchanger it is same whether it's a 3 or 3 dash or 4 or 5 they are lying on a same pressure line okay so pressure at point number 3 or 3 dash 4 or 5 it is same okay obviously in, in in heat exchanger okay pressure doesn't change so whatever the pressure that is available at the inlet of the heat exchanger same pressure we will have it at the exit of the heat exchanger okay so pressure at 3 it is same as pressure at 4 similarly pressure at 4 it is same as pressure at 5 okay so that is what you can understand from the ts diagram now see whatever the air that is coming out of this regenerative heat exchanger it is supplied to the turbine okay so now here i i need to mark some point here okay i'll, I'll just write on here 4 to 5 okay further cooling of air in regenerative heat exchanger in regenerative heat exchanger in regenerative heat exchanger okay now let us see the 4 to uh, let, let us see the next process okay 5 is the inlet to the turbine okay now 6 will be the exit to the turbine right 6 is the exit to the turbine okay so see th th this point i will mark as point number 6 you can see this is point number 6 okay so 5 is the inlet to the turbine 6 is the exit to the turbine so 5 to 6 is the expansion okay 5 to 6 is the expansion so as you can see 5 to 6 okay it's adiabatic this is this is adiabatic or this also you can call it as isentropic okay or this also you can call it as ideal expansion this is the ideal expansion okay but when you talk about okay 5 to 6 dash okay it's a actual expansion it's a actual expansion it's a actual expansion right it's a actual expansion yeah it's a actual expansion 5 to 6 dash is the actual expansion right now what happens during expansion as you can see okay during 5 to 6 we have 100% efficiency efficiency during 5 to 6 dash we have less than 100% efficiency okay 
now what happens uh, during expansion temperature decreases as well as entropy decreases okay so as you can see temperature got decreased from t5 to t6 or t6 dash okay so now whatever the air that is coming out of the turbine okay as you can see only small portion is supplied okay you can see here only small portion is supplied to what it is supplied to the heat heat exchanger okay you can see only small portion of the air is supplied to the heat exchanger because see the air which is available at the exit of the turbine obviously it will be colder okay it will be colder so when you supply the cold air okay so as to cool this air obviously what happens this air gets cooled see this is obviously cool at point number 4 it is also cool okay at point number 6 it is also cool okay but you if you just measure the temperature at point number 4 it is greater as compared to the temperature at point number 6 okay so temperature at point number 4 is greater than temperature at point number 6 so what will happen uh, that means what temperature this uh, the air at point number 4 it is somewhat hotter as compared to the air which is coming at point number 6 so what is happen this cold air at point number 6 will exchange the heat with somewhat hot air at point number 4 okay as a result the, the the temperature get decreased from t4 to t5 okay temperature got decreased from t4 to t5 okay so that's why it is called as regenerative why it is called as regenerative because whatever the air that is available at the exit of the turbine okay it is utilized so as to run so as to so as to cool the air which is coming out of the heat exchanger okay so this is the air at point number 4 which is coming out of the heat exchanger so as to cool it so as to cool this air we are using the air which is coming out of the turbine okay so this is somewhat cold air and it will uh, the, the, the somewhat cold air will will cool somewhat hot air okay so 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 uh, so what happens when it will exchange the heat as you can see okay so at the exit here what happens okay uh, uh, let me show that okay so when it exchanges the heat okay what happens okay it becomes it becomes hot okay so at here it will comes out as a hot at this point it will comes out as a hot right so here it will comes out as a hot air right this air will comes out as a hot air right now see now once it is getting out at point number 6 okay where it is supplied the air is supplied to the kb okay so here only i'll mention that this is a cabin right this is a cabin okay this is a cabin okay so 6 is the inlet to the cabin 7 is the exit to the cabin right so what happens the see when you supply the cold air into the cabin the cold air is going to abstract the heat from the cabin cold air is going to abstract the heat from the cabin as a result what happens temperature of the air okay temperature of the air increases but temperature of the cabin decreases okay so we will get a refrigerating effect here we will get a refrigerating okay effect in the cabin why we will get refrigerating effect in the cabin because see the air which is supplied to the cabin will abstract the heat from the cabin okay so air will abstract the heat from the cabin so cabin the temperature of the cabin gets decrease what happened with the temperature of the air it will increase okay so you can see temperature at the inlet to the turbine uh, sorry cabin was t6 or t6 dash okay so th this is available at the inlet to the cabin and it got increase okay at the exit that that is we got the value of t7 see temperature of the air gets increase because temperature of the cabin get decrease okay so is that okay all of you yeah is it okay with this one yes is that okay yes sir yes sir okay see why why it is called as regenerative air cooling system otherwise why it is called as regenerative air cooling system because whatever the air that is available at the exit of the turbine that is at point number 6 it is utilized okay so as to cool the air which is coming out of the heat exchanger okay so that's why this is called as regenerative heat exchanger okay 
whatever the air that is available at the exit of the turbine it is used so as to run or you it is you used so as to cool the air which is coming out of the heat exchanger that's why this is called as regenerative heat exchanger okay if if you remove this regenerative heat exchanger it is a simple air cooling system okay it is a simple air cooling system okay it it will turns out to be a simple air cooling system if you want i, I will also I also show you the diagram for simple air cooling system okay see see this is simple air cooling system okay so in simple air cooling system this is a simple air cooling system as you can see okay so in the simple air cooling system okay if we add this regenerative heat exchanger it becomes regenerative air cooling system okay that is why it is called as a regenerative okay so th this additional regenerative heat exchanger will make it this system different okay than simple air cooling system okay so this is the additional uh, uh, regenerative heat exchanger okay which is included okay which will which will differentiate this system for, from simple air cooling system okay and wh what was that uh, reduced ambient air cooling system okay as we have we have seen it uh, okay in this session previously okay so that that reduced ambient air it is nothing but what we have applied two turbines in reduced ambient uh, air cooling system we were having two turbines and what what is the purpose of using this turbine okay the purpose of the using the first cooling turbine is to lower the temperature of the air which is supplied okay in the heat exchanger you can see this this this, this the, the, the ram air you can directly supply to the heat exchanger okay but without doing that the first cooling turbine is introduced okay so as to lower the temperature okay so you are supplying more cool air into the heat exchanger which will cool the hotter air okay so so that is that is the additional component okay which has been uh, which has been included okay so this additional turbine will make it reduce ambient air cooling system okay this additional first cooling turbine okay Th this component as you can see on the diagram okay see this is the additional component okay which will make it reduced ambient air cooling system okay so this is called as reduced ambient air okay so what is reduced ambient air we are adding first cooling turbine so as to cool the air which is supplied to the heat exchanger okay so the, 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 this this term will make it different as compared to the simple air cooling system okay otherwise it is simple air cooling system if you remove this if you remove this first uh, cooling turbine it becomes a simple air cooling system okay similarly here in this diagram okay if you remove this okay if you just remove this part okay if you, if you remove this part okay see if if you, if you just remove this uh, part okay this much part if you remove it becomes a simple air cooling system it becomes a simple air cooling system is that okay yes all of you is that okay yes yes is that okay yes yes sir. audible everyone okay so with this we will finish the first module okay with these uh, topics we are finishing with the first module okay and in the next lecture we will start with the second module okay that is basically vapor compression system vapor absorption system okay so in the next lecture we will start with that module if you have any doubt or difficulty you can just let me know okay and we will conclude the session okay so let us start uh, today's session uh, in the last session uh, we have seen the schematic diagram okay 